Well, what's going on, Cornerstone? Man, did anybody come excited about Jesus this morning? Let's go. Hey, y'all, we're kicking off a brand new series. But just before we jump into praise and worship, I want to read this passage of Scripture found in Philippians uh, chapter 4. It says this. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. The truth of the matter is, as we kick off this brand new mental health series, while the mental health struggle may be real, our God is so much realer. And my prayer today is that each and every one of you would walk out of here saying, while it may be hard, I've got the God of peace on my side. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, we thank you that there is nothing impossible for you. So God, would you move throughout this place, Holy Spirit? Would you begin to minister to our minds and our souls and remind us that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And it's in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. And everybody said, Amen. Come on, church, let's put those hands together. We got a lot to celebrate this morning. Let's sing it out. Yeah. Hearts are saved and fall like lightning. Darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over Is my name is registered in heaven Now I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified, this is 
very into the Catholic religion. I was always going to church with them and stuff like that. And then when my dad passed away, it was like, okay, I'm not really into to the religion, so I didn't really go to church. Back in November of 2020, I had a massive heart attack and open heart surgery. I kept on asking, why didn't you take me? Why did you not take me? The only thing that I heard was that I was not ready yet that there was still something I needed to do. My son went ahead and says, Mom, why don't you come to church with me? So I went to Cornerstone, and literally, as soon as that music started, I ended up getting tears in my eyes. I knew right then and there what it was that I needed to do, and it was to get back on the path with Jesus. I just changed my whole perspective. Now when I'm doing something, Instead of jumping into it, I'll go ahead and say, what would Jesus want me to do? How would Jesus want me to do this? Now I sit and read my Bible. It's totally changed me. I want to be baptized because I know it's the first step with me following the way that I should follow. It's bringing me closer to God and to Jesus. And it's something that's down deep that I really want to do. Today, I declare my faith in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. been through so much abuse, relationship abuse, through child abuse. I was raped at a very young age. He molested me for many, 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 many years. I just remember in those moments, God gave his son 
for us. And that's all I can remember, you know, like, I could get the abuse because Jesus was literally nailed to a cross and thorns were put on his head. So I watched Pastor Lynn online and when he talked about learning to be broken, but it's beautiful. That's when I knew. I knew that it was okay. God has loved me through all of this. I definitely remember praying and that prayer was mainly saying, I say yes to you. I am gonna have faith in you. I'm gonna put all the pain, even the happiness, the good moments, the bad. I'm gonna take all of that and give it to you. Today, I declare my faith in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. So my family's always been followers of Christ. We've always gone to church. I was really suffering with anxiety to the point where it was, I had to quit school. I quit school for a quarter or so. They threw me into uh, intensive therapy. That's where I got to know more about, you know, the anxiety and how faith can really come into play there. It wasn't until sophomore year at a Bible summer camp uh, when I really got to know Christ. Jesus helped me out of that dark time in my life where I was crippled by fear. And I, it's still a journey to this day, but I am much better off than I was six years ago. I want to be baptized because I want to show faith to those around me and show that anxiety is not something that can hold you down. Fear is not something that, although it can be crippling, it's something that you can rise out of with help from Jesus, of course. Today, I declare my faith in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Jeez.
out Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, say Jesus, yeah let's sing that together, shout Jesus from the mountains, shout Jesus from the Come on, y'all. We're singing about Jesus. Let's go. Hey, y'all. Well, welcome to church this morning. Again, my name is Brent. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm super excited for a couple reasons. One, we're kicking off a brand new series this morning. But the second reason why I'm excited is because I know when we kick off a brand new series, we've got some brand new first-time guests. Corner Song, can we make some noise for all of our first-time guests real quick? Man, we're so grateful, so thankful Uh, If you're here for the first time, do me a huge favor and just simply text the word NEW to 21999. Again, NEW to 21999. In addition to that, they asked me in the back to let you know that if there's a possibility that you got like space around you, try to get a little bit closer because we're trying to squeeze everybody in here. Uh, So make sure that everyone has a seat. Hey, the other thing that I want to celebrate this morning, y'all, is we put out a plea for you all to give some donations 
for our backpack giveaway. And I am pleased to announce that because of your generosity, we were able to stuff 860 backpacks and give them to our partners in Mexico. It was truly phenomenal, but that would not have happened if it wasn't for your generosity. I want to say thank you on behalf of Pastor Lynn and the entire staff. And if you want to be a part of giving here at Cornerstone, simply text the word GIVE to 21999. Well, listen, we have an exciting, exciting fall planned ahead. And one of the things that we value here at Cornerstone is we value community. And if you have never been to a men's or a women's Bible study, let this fall be the fall that you give it a try. Our men, they're in two different Bible studies right now, one that's focused on purpose and then one that's focused on conquering pain. Absolutely great Bible studies. Our women's, they're doing a Bible studies as well on purpose, one going through the book of Romans, and there's a third one that escapes me right now, but I know it's, oh, it's on mental health and it is absolutely amazing. If you've never participated, I would encourage you, all you gotta do is simply text either CS men or CS women to that exact same number. I promise you, it is going to be worth your time. Also, kicking off this fall, starting next week on the 16th, y'all, the mind and kaboom is back. We are so pumped for it. Pastor Landon has got a phenomenal, phenomenal teaching on the book of James. Now he's let me see a little bit of what he's planning on doing. It's going to be awesome. In addition to that, our entire Kaboom squad has a phenomenal curriculum from all of your kiddos from first through fourth grade. Just to give you a taste of what this fall is going to look out, do me a favor and check out this video. Awesome, but long and kind of confusing. Do you want to spend some time really getting to know it? You can know God and His Word better and live better because of its truth. This is what we do every Tuesday night at The Mine. The Mine is for everyone from every level. It's an engaging, lecture-style, clear Bible study for those who want to dig deeper because the Bible is the best, makes us better, and we love learning it together. Men. Do you want to increase your influence in your family and in the work you do? Do you want guys you can relate to beyond just small talk about work and sports? Men's Bible studies are for you. This is a place for every man of every age and every background to discover all that God has for you. No need to be a Bible expert. A community of brothers is waiting for you right here at Cornerstone. Why wait? Get off the bench and get in the game of growing today. Sign up, show up, and see how God will take your life to the next level. Text CS Men to 21999 today. Every woman has her own story and her own journey. Through ups and downs, victories and setbacks, did you know that there is a community waiting for you? Let's come together in our faith journey by joining not just a Bible study, but a sisterhood. We have a Bible study for every woman from every background, almost every day of the week. You are welcomed here. Join the community to know Jesus better and be known. Text CS Women to 21999 to see what study works for you. What's the hope of your calling? You're chosen. You're accepted by God no matter what anyone says. Communication, are you ready? Is the meeting of meanings. Communication isn't talking. Talking is a part of it. It's the meeting of meanings. And you do something in a way that helps people in a way that no one else can quite like you. I, I call it your holy ambition. God has made all the preparations necessary for you to do everything he's called you to do. God says, I want you to obey me. And the more you obey me, the more your ability to obey me will be perfected or matured. You can learn things beyond what you ever thought you could learn. He has a role for you in his kingdom. He's been calling you into that. And many of you have been giving him excuses. Let's 
So in just a moment, Pastor Lynn is getting ready to come out. He's got a phenomenal message for us this morning. But here's what I want you to know. We intentionally uh, titled this sermon series, uh, The Mental Health Struggle is Real, because we want you to know this one thing. God is also real. So here's what we're going to do. We've got a special song that we want to sing that's going to lead us uh, into today's message. And as we sing this song, here's what we want you to know. While some of you may be asking, man, when is this going to end? When will this get better? When will I stop feeling the way that I feel? God, would you please help? We want you to know that you've got a king that's sitting on a throne, and he's ready to fight on your behalf. Super glad you're here, part of this series. Guys, I just believe this is probably one of the most critical, most important discussions that we could be having right now. If you're even a casual observer of our society, you realize we are struggling 
big time in this area of mental health. And the dilemma is we're going the wrong direction in the struggle. And so we're just going to have a conversation over the next few weeks that says, hey, can we identify why? Why are we losing this thing? Why are we losing ground? Uh, the power of that is if we can identify uh, what's causing this for us, then it sometimes will bring us to moments of saying, well, then here's a pretty obvious solution if we were just to address those issues within our culture, within our own lives. And uh, so I, I just want to tell you what we're about to talk about is critical, not only for you, but probably for someone you know and somebody uh, that you love. Now, just in case we get to the end of today's conversation and you go, wow, that was wildly disappointing, uh, let me give you the list of everything that we're going to be covering and how we're covering it together, because chances are you'll go, Lynn dropped the ball, but man, the rest of it's going to be really good. So today, you and I are just going to talk about, hey... Uh, what's going on? How did we get to where we are? And then are, things, are there things we could begin to do to start moving ourselves and the people we care about in the right direction? Next week, we've actually got two experts coming in to talk to us about, hey, how do you identify when this is starting within the lives of young people and children that you care about? What does it look like to address that? How should you and I respond to that? The next week, we're gonna tackle anxiety together. The week after that, we'll dig into depression, and then we'll go after suicide together. And then on the last week, the sixth week, uh, we're going to talk about how do you overcome addictive behaviors uh, within your life. So I'm just telling you, it is a powerful lineup. That week, we also have another expert coming in uh, to deal with that with us. It, it's a conversation worth having. So here's my, here's my question as uh, we begin today. And that is simply this. How is it possible that we know more about mental health? Uh, the scientists have studied, uh, the stats have all been put out there, all of their proposed solutions have been laid on the table. How is it that we know more in our generation about mental health and yet our generation struggles worse than any other generation in history with this issue? How's that possible? And we're gonna to try to dig to the bottom of that together. And maybe in the digging, actually discover some solutions that work. And it may just be possible, you ready for this? That you and I who name Jesus Christ actually have some advantages in this conversation that people who leave him out don't have. And I know if there's some of you and you'd be going, hey, Lynn, you know, I kind of expected a pastor to say that. If you believe that we're headed the right direction right now with mental health, if you believe the solution is just around the corner and we're all gonna be okay, then don't worry about any of the discussion we're gonna have. But if you would look and say, hey, uh, this train is a train on a track going to nowhere and no one has this figured out yet, then maybe some of the solutions you haven't considered yet could be helpful solutions for you. So would you just stay around and have the conversation and decide for yourself if there's something to this Jesus thing in the process of a conversation about mental health? All right, here we go. Let's just do a real quick flyover and talk about where are we? Let's give ourselves a little bit of a status. Currently, you ready? One in five Americans have been diagnosed with mental health issues. Let that sink in a minute. One in five Americans have been diagnosed. So think about all the people who haven't been diagnosed. One in five Americans have been diagnosed with some form of mental health issues. 17.3 million Americans have been diagnosed with depression. One in 20 children. Think about this, guys. Think about where we are as a culture. One in 20 of our children are dealing with depression. Did you know that depression is actually highest among women? But here's the thing, women. You must be hardier than the rest of us because suicide is twice as prevalent amongst men. 
Suicide is the 12th leading cause of death in our country. Think about that for a minute. Right up there with heart attacks and car, the 12th leading cause of death in our country is people who find themselves in a place of such utter hopelessness that they choose to take their own lives rather than face another day. In teens, it's the number two cause of death. In 2020, 4,500, I'm sorry, 45,000 979 people died from suicide. 45,979. 1.2 million people tried to commit suicide in 2020. And the highest mortality rate, you ready for this? The people who most often commit suicide, middle-aged white males. Those guys we keep saying, hey, they're at the top of the curve, they have everything we all... Middle-aged white males, number one people for committing suicide. And guys, I'm just telling you, this, this conversation is about a struggle that is absolutely epidemic within our country and our culture. And so here's what I'm going to do today. I want to unpack two things I think have been major contributors in sending us into this mental tailspin, and then some conversation about how we could begin to turn the tide. All right, first thing, first major... Uh, contributor to why we've gotten ourselves where we are is that we have messed up the boxes. Let, let me see if I can explain that. If you were to talk to people about mental health, uh, almost anybody you would talk to would say, hey, uh, there is a mental side to mental health. Uh, it's going and seeing a professional who's been trained, uh, who's been educated to be able to have that conversation with you, and that's how you respond to mental health. You need to hear me say, this is an absolutely legitimate box, even for Christians. And, and the reason I say that out loud is that I think there's been a tenor sometimes amongst Christians that say, hey, every mental health issue is actually a spiritual issue. And I'm just going to say to you, that's not accurate. It's not. There are some things that are not spiritual uh, that are really about receiving a really, really good counsel about things that may not be directly addressed in the Bible getting help that's outside of something that is a spiritual issue. So I'll, I'll give you an example uh, from my own life. A couple of years ago, I had a friend who deeply betrayed, who in the matter of just a really short period of time, turned on me with just an anger and a vitriol and a, I mean, just an intensity that I couldn't get my head around. And I kept thinking to myself, how is it that someone I've done so much life with, we've done so much together, we've loved so deeply, could turn so quickly and so profoundly against me. And I had someone say, hey, Lynn, you really ought to go see a counselor. And I'm gonna be honest and tell you, I hesitated. I went, I, you know, I don't know if that's gonna help. And eventually I went and saw a Christian counselor. When I went and explained what had happened, the Christian counselor immediately said, oh, that's superhero syndrome. Now, that's my words for it. That's not his. His were much more technical with big Latin things on it. But superhero syndrome, and it was basically this. Lynn, uh, that person had you on a pedestal. They had set you up in their lives as this, like, iconic superhero figure. And, Lynn, the truth is, on your best day, you're only so good. But, but there was this, this other part that they had ascribed to you that just was not even real. It was just you were a superhero in their minds. And when you didn't behave the way they wanted you to behave, when, when you didn't show up the way they expected you or demanded that you showed up, that same level of unrealistic, right, turned into an equal proportion of disdain and hatred for you. That's how that happened. And I'm just gonna tell you, I walked out of that conversation, I walked out of that appointment with a Christian and went, that is so helpful. And I'm just gonna tell you, I wouldn't have found that answer in scripture. That's not something scripture deals directly with. And yet I walked away with such a clear understanding of what was going on in that relationship and why they were responding that way and what my responsibilities were. I'm just telling you, it's, it's a legitimate box uh, there's a second box, 
uh, which most people would affirm, and that box is uh, physical. And it, it basically simply is this. Hey, sometimes what kind of shows or presents itself as a mental illness issue is actually a physical imbalance. Uh, there's things physically that are out of whack or uh, out of balance with us physically, and now it presents as a mental struggle. It's interesting right now with postpartum depression. Originally, most people put that into a mental issue. It was a counseling issue. And what we've discovered over time is simply this, that, that most of the struggle of postpartum depression actually belongs in a physical bucket, that it's hormones that are completely out of control, completely out of whack post the pregnancy, and it's a physical thing to get them back into right order. And suddenly the depression's not there because the physical causes of it uh, have been remedied. What you need to hear me say is, these, these are two legitimate buckets. They, they are absolutely there, they're real, and even you and I as Christ followers may occasionally need to go search out and say, is this what's happening in my life? Do I need to look for solutions uh, in that bucket? Because here's what you need to know. Finding the right bucket will help you find a solution that actually solves the problem. This is absolutely critical. So I've got a dear, dear friend, and she's unbelievably capable. If you were to ever meet her, you'd say, this is a profoundly sharp lady. She helped and was a significant part of running a huge business that was successful for years and years and years. And not too long ago, suddenly that woman faded. And the woman who showed up was radically different. Uh, she was filled with anger. She was constantly confused. She would begin to tell stories about that never happened. And you were just like, what, what in the world is going on? And so her husband immediately said, hey, I've got, I've got to get her in with some counselors. We've got to see what's going on. And how has she just had such a slip from reality? Nothing happened. So then they came back over and said, well, maybe there's a physical issue. Maybe there's some sort of an imbalance going on in her life. And so the doctors began to investigate that and said, no, it, everything seems to be good. And so there was this like ping pong back and forth trying to say, what, what in the world is happening in this moment? And then someone raised their hand and they said, uh, what about Lyme disease? And sure enough, they tested her, turned out that it was Lyme disease. They got her the proper medications literally within the course of a couple weeks. She was completely back on track. All that to say, you're ready for this, that if the source of the struggle is physical, then the solution of the struggle is going to be a physical solution. If the source of the struggle is a mental struggle, then the source of the solution is going to be a mental solution. The problem is if you and I get this backwards or if we mess up the boxes. So let's say somebody is validly struggling with depression. They really do need to go see and be with a professional, maybe get some insights they haven't seen before, some understandings they haven't considered before. But instead, they decide to go and find a physical solution, and they're going to self-medicate. See, I'm going to find my solution in a bottle, a bottle of alcohol, a bottle of pills. I don't even need to tell you. When the solution is truly med medical and you decide to find a physical solution, pills, alcohol, all you're going to do is numb it. You will not have solved anything that's a part of your depression. Matter of fact, truth be known, in those moments when your mind begins to think clearly again, when you begin to take an assessment of life, chances are whatever the struggle was is now worse because numbing it is never a solution. Make sense? Okay, nod your heads so that I think this is the best sermon I've ever done. Just go, Lynn, oh man, total sense. Okay, here's the dilemma. You ready? That the world puts every single one of our struggles into one of these two buckets. 
that they would say, look, if you're struggling on something that looks like mental health, it's either got to be you need a professional to have counseling and drink, or there's a physical thing that's out of balance. We're going to prescribe for you a pill. Remember what we said. Finding the right bucket is critical. What if there are more buckets than our culture gives credit for? Then suddenly, I'm sending you to a counselor that has no possibility of helping because it's not in that bucket. Or I'm prescribing you a pill that can't possibly bring you a solution because your struggle is not in that bucket. And I'm gonna suggest to you that there's two buckets that right now culture ignores. One of those buckets is simply life skills. So a gal the other, not too long ago, said, hey, Lynn, I'm, I'm really struggling with depression. First thought, medical solution. And I said, well, tell me more about what's going on. And she said, I have this horrible boss. Every single day I go to work, th this boss is just absolutely demeaning to me, uh, rude to me, treats me horribly. I, I go home at night and all I think about all night long is how much I dread going into work the next day. And it's just got me in this perpetual funk. And I'm telling you, I am depressed like I can't believe. Now, here's what you need to know. That is not a mental issue. That, that's not something a pill fixes. It's a life skill issue. It's an ability to have a struggle or a problem in my life and think through reasonable ways to problem solve. See, the reality is, if you've got a bad boss, guess what? So do we. The reality is, almost everybody you know has encountered bad bosses, probably, let's be honest, probably more than they've encountered good ones. This is a life skill issue. And, and what I had to say to my friends, look, you've got three possibilities here. You can try to win your boss over by killing them with kindness. You can just be so nice and sweet and wonderful that it's like, why am I being mean to them? Uh, you can go into your boss and say, hey, can we talk about this? I don't understand. There's clearly something. There's a tension there. There's a struggle there. Can we talk about this? Or the third is, you can get on LinkedIn and find a new job. That's, those are three, ready? Three problem-solving skills. Your depression is not a mental issue. Your depression is a life skill issue. I've got a dear, dear friend. We were talking the other day, and they said to me, hey, Lynn, if I'm just honest, when I have struggles, I resort to anxiety almost immediately. And I said, well, what is that about? And they said, I've already, I got this pretty well figured out. My parents, while I was growing up, anytime there was struggle, anytime there was a problem in our home, they immediately just sat down and became filled with anxiety. That was their way of coping with struggles in our lives. So I grew up never seeing problem-solving skills. And so now I find myself as an adult, whenever a problem comes up, I don't think, hey, what would be a reasonable thing to do to solve this? I immediately go where my parents always went. I immediately go to anxiety. Guys, that is not a pill that solves that problem. It's a life skill issue. And here's the good news about that, is that if you find yourself in a moment like my friend, you can get better at this. You can just say, hey, look at this. I ought to have the ability to talk to my boss or look for a new job. I ought to be able to do that. I'm gonna find people who are better at it than me. I'm gonna ask them how to solve problems. And I'm gonna become better at this. That ought to encourage every one of us. There's a fourth category that the world absolutely refuses uh, to add to the conversation. And that is a spiritual reality. That, that my anxiousness comes from a place where I go, hey, I've got a problem I don't know how to solve. I, I, I've got an ongoing thing that I just don't believe will ever get better. 
And it's, it's, it's not about meeting with the counselor because the truth is there's nothing the counselor can tell me that's gonna change that. And, and it's not about taking a pill and trying to numb it. This is actually a spiritual issue. And I know, I know, I know, I know a bunch of you would say, well, Lynn, I know, I know that God is bigger than my problems. I know that God is with me and taking care of me. It doesn't change my anxiety. It doesn't change that I feel hopeless and I feel depressed in this moment. Let me explain to you why. Because this is not a knowing issue. This is a maturing issue. This is going from knowing something or believing something to actually practicing something. Actually living that moment hand in hand with God and seeing that he was faithful when you put your trust in him. Let, Let me see if this helps. This last summer, Lisa and I are on vacation. As a part of vacation, we stopped in at the house of a young man who used to be in our youth group many years ago. Today, he's a fully grown man. He's been a California highway patrolman. But during COVID, he came up with this idea. He was gonna go out in his yard, go to two of the pine trees in his yard, take steel cables and attach them 40 feet high on these pine trees clamp them off with steel clamps, bring the cables down and hook them to a stadium seat. You know what I mean by a stadium seat? And you sit in the stadium. Stadium seat. Those pipes on a stadium seat are like that big and hollow. So he hooks them to a stadium seat. He then puts a cable on the back of the stadium seat, runs it up to a pulley, brings it down to his four-wheeler so that he can drive his four-wheeler away, pull the swing all the way up to the 40 feet height of the trees with somebody sitting in, and then you release the swing. If this is not enough, the ground in front fell away so that when you actually swang out for the first time and reached the apex, you were 70-something feet off the ground. So he's telling us about this swing that he built during COVID, and then he says, would you like to swing? (laughs) Now, here's what my mind is going. You are not an engineer. Nobody does. You're a kid from my youth group. (laughs) Putting steel cables on a tree and hooking them to a stadium seat. My answer is simply no. No, 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 no. I don't want to swing on your stadium seat. The problem is I'm married to Lisa, who is fearless. So immediately she says, absolutely, yes, yes, yes. So now we go outside, Lisa hops into the stadium seat, he pulls the cable up. The interesting thing is the cable, when it's pulled all the way up, hasn't fully extended those two steel cables. So when he releases it for the first 20 something feet, it just falls. And then the swing catches in. I'm standing there watching my wife falling to her death, trying to remember if I paid my latest insurance premium. The swing catches, it swings on out. My wife's going, yay, 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 yay. She gets done swinging. They say, do you want to do it again? She goes, yes, yes, do it again. So they take her up, whoa, she swings again. Then she gets done and they turn to me. Do you want to swing? No, no. But men, you understand, right? I couldn't say that out loud. I would have had to give away my man card. My wife just did it twice. So I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They stick me in the stadium seat. Of course, I mean, I, you know, the stadium seat and I are, I'm a little more girth than my wife has. They're pulling me up. My throat is dry. My brain thinks of a thousand scenarios of death. And then they let us go. And I want you to know, not a single sound was able to come out of my mouth. I was just... But here's why an interesting thing happened. Once I did it once, 
Once I realized the little stadium seat didn't come detached, that it was able to hold my weight, they said, hey, Lynn, do you want to do it again? And I said, you know what I think I do? And I did it a second time. This is why just knowing that God is bigger than your problems is not enough. That this is why believing that he is with you and you are not alone is not enough. It's when you live that with him. It's when you get in the stadium seat and take the swing. And then suddenly you go, oh, it works. And guys, I'm just telling you some of the reasons that you and I, even as Christ followers, are filled with anxiety and filled with depression is because we can know what we're supposed to know and we could tell others what you're supposed to believe, but we haven't been swinging in swings. And until we do, we're gonna struggle with what other people struggle with because this is one of the boxes that some of our fears and some of our anxiousness actually belongs in. It's not a pill. It's not a better counseling session. It's a better relationship with our God. Second thing, second thing that's got us uh, in so much trouble. One is that our culture just doesn't have enough boxes or have the right boxes. But the second thing is this, you and I are absolutely involved in stinking thinking, okay? I know that's what your grandma used to say, but it was actually stinking thinking. Because here's the deal. We live in a culture that perpetuates lies. And the danger is this. When you believe a lie, you'll live a lie. When, when the culture says, you're a loser, you, you'll never mount to anything. All your hopes, all your dreams, they're gone. I know you're only nine. They're gone. <laughs> and when you and I believe a lie, we will live a lie. Matter of fact, Scripture addresses this. Here's what Scripture says. And guys, if you don't, if you don't get anything else from the conversation today, if you can learn the two Scriptures that we're about to unpack together, it will be life-changing. Here's the first one. It says this. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Just means this. Whatever you believe to be true will affect how you live. And if you believe a lie, you will live a lie. If you believe the truth, then you can live the truth. But what you allow to come in, what you allow yourself to believe, absolutely fundamentally changes how you face this world. Do I have the confidence that I'm okay? Do I believe that my situation is bigger than me and bigger than God? If you believe a lie, you will live a lie. All right, maybe this helps a little bit. So uh, when Joshua, my son, was about nine years old, we put a pool in our backyard. I told my son Joshua after we built the pool, I said, hey, just so you know, there's an invisible shark in the pool. I can't remember why I told him that. It, it might be that I thought, hey, I don't want him out there by himself and getting in the pool without his mom and his dad. So I'll tell him there's an invisible shark. He'll be too afraid to hop in the pool. Or it might just be that I was doing what a typical dad does and I was torturing my son. I don't know. But I told him, there's an invisible shark in the pool. Here's the problem. He believed me. And for the next six years of his life, he refused to get in the pool. We built a pool for him. I would be in the pool and go, Josh, look, I'm in the pool. The shark's gone. I don't care. He's coming back. I go, look, your mom's swimming in the pool. No, your friends are in the... Six years... Now, here's what I'm happy to report. He's 36 now. He started swimming recently. But <laughs> you, you understand the principle, right? If you believe a lie, then you're going to live a lie. I heard a gal talking a while back about um, growing up. And she said, hey, when I was growing up, I was super good academically. I was getting straight A's in every single class at school. One afternoon, I'm in the backyard with my brother, and we're throwing the ball back and forth. Unfortunately, she said, I was catching the ball with my face. My mother, seeing this from the kitchen window, came walking out and said, oh, honey, 
You did not get the athletic gene. You got the academic gene. So you're really, really good at academic, but you'll never be good as an athlete. She said, I walked into my home that day and never again tried to play sports. She said, later on, I discovered that what my mom told me wasn't true at all. That the vast majority of people, they don't start in their first day, they're amazing at athletics. Most people have to practice. They have to practice and practice and practice and practice. That's how they get good. And she said, you know, I've wondered since then how many things I missed out on life because I believed something that my mom told me that actually wasn't accurate. Because you ready? If you believe a lie, you will live a lie. Here's why this is an issue. Because the world we live in is constantly pumping lies at us. Constantly. And a lot of them are nice little sayings that we feel really, really good about and they make your heart feel warm. Stuff like, you ready for this? Do what you're passionate about. Find the job that you just have all the passion in the world for. Do that job. You understand that's a lie, right? that the vast, 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 vast majority of us are not passionate about our jobs. We're lucky if we don't throw up when we go there. (laughs) We're just happy to get out of there with her, right? You were never built to find purpose or passion out of your employment. Guys, I worked for years on a freight dock while I was going to Bible college. I was never passionate about loading trucks. I've got an uncle who spent his entire life mowing lawns in Arizona in 120 degree heat. I guarantee you he never woke up in the morning and said, oh God, thank you so much. Another 120 degree day mowing 14 yards, yes. But you know what, he was passionate about hunting. And isn't it true that most of us are gonna live our passion, it's probably something we do on the side from our jobs. Our jobs take care of our families, our jobs put a roof on. And if you go looking for a job to give you passion and fulfillment in life, you'll be miserable waiting for it to happen. It's a lie. What is this? The what? This is this generation's Bible. You see, this generation is pretty convinced that most of what this says is true. They they would look here before they'd ever open up and look for a verse. And then we get on social media. And as we're on social media, all of a sudden, here's this family, and they're in Bora Bora, and they're all wearing matching shirts, and their arms are around each other, and we're like, I family, such a loser family. And what we don't know is, is that three minutes before they took that picture, they were cussing each other out. (laughs) We see somebody and they buy this incredible car and we're like, dude, how's that happening? He's like 10 years younger than me and how's he affording that? that? Man, and all I've got is my 2003 Dodge mommy van. What, what? I'm a loser. And what we don't know is, is that within two months, he's gonna be in desperate trouble because he's way overextended himself financially. And, and you, re, you realize, you realize with this, this makes us play the comparison game. And when you and I sit there and try to make our lives somehow match that, no wonder we come out going, oh man, God doesn't love me, and I'm, I'm just, man, I'm, I'm just like yesterday's hamburger still sitting in the refrigerator. I mean, it's just, what a horrible life. And guys, I'm, here's what you need to hear. The comparison game is designed for you to lose. It's a lie. There, there's nothing about it that's legitimate. And if you play the comparison game, you will lose every time. It's why, you ready for this? It's why scripture says, whoop, above all else, 
above all else. Above all else. Above all else. Got to go to the Lord. If you would, remember he said the two, if you would grab the two verses. If you would grab, this is probably the most powerful verse when it comes to you and I believing a lie. Getting caught in anxiety, getting caught in depression. Above all else, guard your heart. It's almost this picture that says, like, stand at the door of your heart. Stand there with a sword of truth and take every lie that the world tries to tell you, every lie that comes across TikTok and just go, no, 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 no. That's not the truth. Here's what's interesting. Think about this. When Jesus was being tempted by the devil, every time the devil told a lie, Jesus responded with scripture. He says, no, 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 that's not true, Satan. Here's what the word of God says. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from your heart. Okay, so I've done a wonderful job of depressing you, mostly because that's my spiritual gift, so I have. But let me see if I can help you out. Maybe, maybe, let me see if we can go through this for a minute. Talk about guarding your heart, that when lies come, you go, no, 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 no. This is truth. Let me give you some truths to guard against the lies. You are a precious child of God. If, if you have accepted Jesus into your life, you're a child of the King. And just think about that, parents, about how deeply and desperately you lay down your life for your children. You do anything for your children. And what if I tell you that that's not even close to the affection and love that God has for you as his child. Hey, I am not forgotten. I am not forsaken. I'm a child of God. I'm not a loser. I'm a child of the King. You are worth more than gold. Oh, you'll never amount to anything. Man, man, you, you are nothing but taking up space. Did you know if someone were to go to God and say, I'll give you all the gold in the world in exchange for, for one of them, God would smile and say, bad deal, no thanks. I have already set their value. Their value is my son. You have a purpose. Guys, I don't care how many times you've blown it, I don't, I don't care how slowly your life is moving. I don't care if you're in the middle of a setback and you just got fired. It doesn't change the purpose of God in your life. If you're still breathing, God is still working his purpose in you. Why are you depressed about that? That the creator of the universe is working his plan in your life? God is your protector. He is in front of you. He is behind you. He's protecting you. That thing I'm so anxious about and maybe it'll happen and I don't. No, no, no. God is my protector. No problem is bigger than my God. That thing that I can't figure out how to solve, that thing that looks like to my mind and my heart that it will go on forever. I serve the God who stood in a boat one day and said to the wind and the waves, peace be still. And they went silent. There is no problem bigger than my God. Here's what Jesus said. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy to tell me lies about myself, to tell me I'm a loser and I'll never amount to anything and your life is already over. I have come, Jesus said, that they may have life and have it to the full. Guys, I'm just telling you. 
putting it in the right box is a big deal. And it, it may be that you need to go see a professional and it, it may be that there's something physical that needs to be addressed in your life. It may be that you have a life skill that's lacking, but you realize the one unspeakable advantage that you and I have in this conversation is the truth of God about us. Here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a challenge. You know that, I'm not gonna ever leave it easy. Here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. I'm gonna ask every one of us to do, even if you say, Lynn, I don't struggle there, I don't care. We're gonna do this together. Here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. I'm gonna ask you to turn off social media for 30 days. You just say, hey, I'm on a truth fast. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna give that opportunity in my life. I'm just gonna be on a truth fast and I'm gonna only go after those things that are true. But if that's the case, then I'm also gonna ask you to start doing devotions for 30 days. And we've got an app for you. Uh, if you'll just text the word Devo to 21999 every morning, you'll get a five minute Devo to do. Can I tell you that one of the greatest joys of my life is sitting down with my wife and doing our Devos and then praying together afterwards. Five minute Devo, and then I'm gonna ask you to pray for five minutes. And I'm not out of the same going, Lynn, there's 10 minutes, 10 minutes. I just gave you back an hour and a half. <laughs> Turn off social media 30 days, five minute Devo, five minutes in prayer. See if, see if the struggles go quieter because you're living in truth, okay? And then here's the second thing. Some of us are gonna say, hey, Lynn, I, I need some help right now. And here's what you can do. You can text the word support to 21999. And if you do that, we're committed. We're gonna follow up with you as quickly as we can. We're gonna get you and help you try to find what, what box does my struggle belong in? Do I need counseling? Do I need some medical help? What is it? We're gonna try and help you get there. Some of you are here and you're saying, Lynn, I need help today. So here's what you need to know. We've got pastors out there in the lobby who will counsel with you. We've got prayer warriors who will pray with you. We're gonna have a team at front who will meet with you and pray with you and talk with you. There's no reason to leave today and not reach out. Here we go, let's pray. Hey, dearest Heavenly Father, thank you Thank you that the reality is that some of us really do need to seek out a counselor. Someone who's studied this and is professional can give us a new insight that we wouldn't have considered, an insight that maybe scripture doesn't directly deal with. Some of us need to go see a doctor because things are out of balance and we, we need a prescription that would bring those back in line. Some of us need to develop some life skills we, we just don't know how to problem solve on our own and we need to lean into that. But my guess today is there's a whole bunch of us who just need to grow up in our faith. We, we need to get into a stadium seat and say, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust you for the swing, knowing that the first time is probably gonna be terrifying, but the second time will be easier and suddenly we'll find ourselves without the anxiety, without the depression, because we found a God we could trust. God, this is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, such an amazing word today. We're so glad you were here. Just to reiterate what Lynn was saying, you can text support to 21999 to get immediate help. You can text prayer to 2199, or better yet, come down and have someone pray with you, um, as well as meeting with a counselor or a prayer team member out in the lobby. God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you back here.